it's it's not a show. Um, but I am connecting with my buddy again, Scott. Talking about art, talking about skin. Hey, come here for your pound of skin, right? Am I right? That's right. Yeah, they say uh, they say the first five days after the weekend are the hardest. But uh, these every other Monday, so are the silver lining on that. So <laughs> this is not a show, and might not even be a connection. Here's Judah and guest. So yes, I'm here with Scott uh, Pin Pinnell, right? Yep. Pinnell. Pinnell. Yep. Always That's right. Around. <laughs> uh, and. Uh, you know, you know, I used to live in Quebec, where we would say Pinot. We would say Pinot. Oh, there you go. Pinot. So I should know it. That's right. Pinot, right? That's right. Well, uh, and you know, uh, anyway. my son, Dante, he said that he met uh, some people with the exact same last name in Michigan, and they pronounced it totally differently. So, <laughs> I, Really? Yeah. I, I, I had when, about 23 years ago when I worked at a record store, I had some French patrons come in and, and I said, Oh, you know, you know, my last name is Pinot. Can you tell me, am I pronouncing it right? And they said, no, it's Pino. So, Pino. Yeah. Pino. <laughs> Interesting. What do yeah. I know? Like, like, like the, uh, like the wine, like the Pinot. Yeah. Pinot, uh, Pinot like Grigio. Pinot, Pinot, Pinot Noir. Grigio. Yes. Pinot Noir. Yes. Exactly. Well, let's talk about skin color. Mm -hmm. Now, this could get, uh, we're not talking anything political or anything. We're just no. talking about when it comes to art, how I just thought it was fascinating. I, you were the very first person to talk about that I've ever talked to. For, of course, other people have talked about it, but that I've talked to, to talk about the importance of skin tone and skin color. Mm -hmm. And one thing you mentioned was the type of paint, and that that sparked something in my brain. I was like, "Whoa, yeah!" Because colors, huh? Yeah. So, so, so let's get into it. What's so well, what's so important about skin color? Well, here's the thing. Um, Earlier, uh, in uh, when we, uh, I think in the first or second meeting we had, probably both of them, I, I was stressing how, like in, in, in um, you know, in the time of like the Renaissance, heading into the Renaissance and during the Renaissance, post Renaissance, there have been sort of a, a tiers of of how works are elevated and appreciated the, they're they're stacked in the, it, by by the type of work in in other words um the uh, still life is going to be on the bottom rung it's going to be okay. much less it, it's not seen as important as as important and then you have someone like caravaggio that comes around and paints an amazing fruit basket and just blows everyone away but but typically still life is 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 relegated to like the lower level then landscape would be next uh and then and then mm. when you get into the next level would be like portraiture or mm. a, just a portrait of someone where you, now you're 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 really engaged in the human figure with a landscape you could have human figures but they they're typically very small not a not the featured role they're they're often um shown being enveloped by by creation mm. uh, and that's the tactic there uh but with portraiture now you're getting into the human figure that would be the next rung up and then the next two would be actually three i guess you could say and they all fall under really the, the idea of composition when, when you in, in composition you are now constructing something whether it be historical that's why i said there's three typically historical religious or mythological typically those three and mm. today we have uh, actually by by the time you start getting out of the renaissance you get what's called genre paintings and that would be also with human figures often and that's the uh, people doing what they normally do so in, in caravaggio mm -hmm. and a lot of his uh followers people that painted like him would paint a lot of uh, people 
playing cards, uh, you know, in, in, in a tavern, because that happened a lot. Uh, or you would have, let's see, uh, well, with the, with the Dutch painters, they painted a lot of, a lot of tavern type settings. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you're just people, what they do, but it's still, you have figures, you have human figures. So with that, there's still a composition. The idea of composition, now you're, you're telling a story, whether it's historical, something uh, that's mythological in the common, in the common culture, religious, that's also a co the common culture, uh, or mm. something you're fabricating, which is, is usually yeah. much more risky um, and doesn't have as much traction. Go ahead. Oh. You have a question? Well, I, I mean, how? so the thing that you introduced to me was this idea of introducing drama in your Drama, art. right. Yes. Drama. And so it's, talk to me about drama in these genres. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so so in, 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 in the, 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 the thing is, what I've learned, the more, the, as I, I'm now kind of my moving towards basically be telling you know you and anyone else that what i what i consider myself to be is a a uh, biblical narrative painter at this point it doesn't okay. mean that that's all i'm ever going to paint but i that's how i see myself right now but definitely what's on my plate right now that's all i'm going to be doing for at least three or four years so i'm focusing on being the best biblical narrative painter that I can be. And Ooh. I realize as someone who uh, I, I have at times teaching duties and preaching duties in my church, I'm someone who really, do, I, I, I love studying the Bible. Um, mm. And, and so I, I, I've, I've learned by studying the Bible and also studying paintings that you have to betray certain things somewhere <laughs> some certain things of for, uh, of accuracy in order to be accurate to the essence of them and i'm not talking about things like the gospel or the, the broad things like that but things like um the prodigal the prodigal son it's it's almost impossible to paint that historically based on the the customs of the time the idea that the son could not have gotten anywhere near the gate without getting clobbered by the people in the village for what he the disgrace he brought on them by leaving in the first place the father thus rushes out and gets him before basically he comes before to they city. clobber him. yes yes exactly that's the idea uh they would have totally mm. if not physically hurt him or worse uh they would have performed some kind of a ceremony basically that, that basically says that you are dead to me you're dead to us and uh, that would have ruined him. The father comes out knowing that and, and saves him. How are you going to paint that? I mean, it's mm. most of the paintings you see, you're not going to it's see. Nuanced, right? Yeah, you're going to see a more intimate, like Rembrandt, the father embracing the son. And it's more closed. Uh, mine's, I'm, I'm betraying that even more in mine. I have his, his um, one of his knees on the father's doorstep. Now, that would have never happened. But the idea is one mm. knee is 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 down off the doorstep on the street, and the other is on the doorstep, and the little light peeking out from the father's house. The door is now open. He's right at the door. That was, that's not how they would have met, but that tells a story. It, it doesn't betray the the truth and the essence of the text, but it does betray the actual historical accuracy. And you see this all over the place. Um, Painter saying, "I'm going to make. I'm going to cut something here so that I can have a, a payoff here that actually gets the essence of what the text is trying to say. So if that makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Getting a message across without being completely uh, true to well to the reality of the situation. Uh, right. Yeah. It, exactly. uh, the first person I ever heard say this blew my mind and, and I come back to it. And it's um, so Jordan B. Peterson said that uh, uh, he said that uh, fiction can tell truth much better than reality. Hmm. And, you know, of course I have a visceral like reaction against that, but yeah, it kind of goes to what you're saying. It's like, 
you can get to the point of truth. You can get across a truth mm -hmm. easier with fiction right. than you can with the reality. In, in, in what I was just describing, it's going to capture one moment and one, one mm -hmm. essence of that story. And this is a, a fictional story that Jesus told. Okay, let's. Yeah. So yeah. he's playing with the story. Now we're going to play with that story. But it's not telling the whole parable. It, it isn't. And neither is Rembrandt. It's not, and isn't, not telling that whole isn't, story. Isn't that an, an important of aspect of isn't that an important aspect of writing and art in general? Mm -hmm. Is that we're not if you want pure reality, take a picture. Mm -hmm. We are representing yeah. uh, our artist art um, painting is representing something different. It's 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 got a message, right? If it doesn't have a message, what is it? Right, and that, that, that's where it comes back to to drama. And, and bringing a person into the story, and they did this for different reasons. Obviously, literacy rate was the biggest reason the painting was so big during pre, the pre-Renaissance era. I mean, way back uh, from the time that even they were painting religious pictures and mythological pictures in caves all the way through it, it, to, to Renaissance, post-Renaissance. I mean, literacy rate was so, so low that that was how well in the church handled this in kind of dubious ways but but to be able to tell people the story of the church you know of the of the story of um of revelation uh but but here's the thing when you get into compositional painting and and at times in the renaissance i think mythological storytelling was probably right there par with with a lot of religious stuff. I think you have more religious stuff if you just take a number count, but mythological storytelling in terms of a lot of the big pictures and some of the ones we'll look at today are yeah. are very prominent. Very prominent because it's in the cult yeah. it's in the it's in the culture. It's it's a, it, it's it's in the the cu cultural conversation. And that's what we're interested in today, right? It's 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 social Let's media. It's, how, do you, how do you how do you connect with people? So oh, yeah. exactly connecting with people, yeah. But so, but yeah, you're. But you're right when when you when you scroll down your social media, you're looking for people stories. You're looking for people interaction. Ultimately, I mean, you see some cool things. Flesh. You're looking for yes. human. Yeah, exactly. And it, you know, it disturbs me and yet intrigues me the fact that um, the internet was propelled by uh, pornography. Mm. What what propelled mm -hmm. the innovation of the internet was flesh, you know, p looking at flesh. And I think there's something in that. You know, as somebody who works with the internet, I, I try to tell people, it's like, you know, that's the perversion. But what are people really looking for? I think people are really looking for the human connection. And, yes. and to me, that is the at the essence of art is yeah. looking for a human connection and it starts with flesh, right? Yeah. It yeah. starts Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think that's why that's why compositional pictures were always like it wasn't even it, it's something that we've had to figure out looking back like these pictures were lauded and they are compositional in nature. Okay, well that tells us something that people want they they valued and they have valued and they still value. You look at the price tags on these paintings when they go to auction. If you find a, a you can find a larger landscape picture that'll sell for less than a compositional smaller picture that has human interaction, it has a, it's telling a story. Yeah, inter, yeah, but, interaction. And and that's what people really want. And, and and it doesn't mean I mean if you find the right landscape and that's someone like Claude Lorraine or or JMW Turner that are incredible landscape painters, they're they're on a different category. They're outliers, but by and large, people want the human interaction. And um, yeah, so there's there's a lot of places we can go here. But uh, you know what? And this is you mentioned. Let's do. Let's make this a part one, and we'll see where it goes because okay, yeah. it seems yeah. like this would have have legs to go for a while. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, so let's take a look. What, where do you want to go first? So, you had mentioned if we could kind of get 
from the idea of going from the Renaissance to to Impressionism, and I think that's the right, totally the right um, tack to take because the Renaissance is where uh, figure painting and oil painting and not just oil painting, but also frescoes, but the human figure in painting started to really, I mean, it, it had the greatest leap yeah, that deep. it ever had. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah. They figured it out. That's basically the Renaissance. They figured it out. They figured out how to do it, how to, how yeah. to paint with many mediums. And so that's, that's why it was such a huge flourishing of the arts. And then uh, Impressionism is perfect because that's really when the human figure, that that's kind of the end of the, of the, I would say the exaltation of the human figure. I mean, it's it's, uh, it's hard for me to say exaltation because in the Renaissance, exaltation meant something totally different about the human figure than it did by yeah. by the time. Like they're painting these scenes, but they're they don't want to paint anything religious. It's all genre mm -hmm. stuff. It's all stuff about people, what what's going on in the, in the world around them, and 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 okay. and they're not trying to capture a sense of realism. So it's almost like they're starting. They're really this natural progression before modernism. Yeah. And uh, so I think that's that's the those are the right uh, uh, barriers. We can talk about stuff before and after. That's it's, it certainly yeah, it, yeah. it matters, but that, that that makes the most sense. And in the Renaissance, what you found is that, and this starts from in, in the 1300s, really. Although the Renaissance doesn't really start to take take shape and really get traction until the early 1400s, but the things are already happening in the 1300s. Jan Van Eyck, so J-A-N, and then Van Eyck, E-Y-C-K, was one of the one of the figures uh, in painting. One of the one of the the painters that really figured out how 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 to to mix pigments and colors and glaze so glazing mm. became a thing more so and, and you have to understand too before oil painting became the prominent way of painting there were some different types there there was tempera painting where you have egg you have the egg uh introduced into the, the egg yolk introduced into the that protein into the the painting pick it, and that helped it dry faster it was extremely permanent but you can only you do that on panels you can't do it on it, it's strong but it you know it'll if you put it on something flexible like canvas or linen it'll just it, it's terrible break uh, right yeah break and crack exactly but on panel, it, it they still hold up over the over the ages. Panel paintings, whether it's just oil or temperate and oil, hold up the best. So they, a panel, when you say panel, is that made out of wood? It's just yeah, a wood, wood. Panel? often oak, but yeah, wood. Mm. And they'll 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 put a rabbit skin glue on it to get it kind of uh, just mm. uh, some kind of a high glue first, just like you would on a canvas or linen. You put a high glue, and then. Um, they, you could do all kinds of different things, but they, you really just try to get layers of that. They would gesso it. They, that's what the, the term gesso comes from. They would often put marble dust. Um, I think I have some of these things around here. Aha. Yes, I brought some stuff. Marble. Here's a couple of pints <laughs> of, of marble dust. Um, I keep everything what, bagged what up. What do you do so with mar I have never used yeah. marble dust. What is marble dust? Marble dust. You can put this into your ground layer um, or your gesso if you're doing a panel. You can mix it in with the rabbit skin glue, and it just it it's more so so. I mentioned oak is one of the one of the one of the kind of kind of panels they would use. Well, if you know oak, it has a very porous open grain to it, and so you don't want to paint and have all these lines t -t 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 grain lines. So you need to fill it in. The rabbit skin glue will prepare the surface. But it won't fill in all of those green lines. So you you would mix something like marble dust, and you just put it on a trowel, and just light it on there, and just let it dry. So marble wow, dust. Wow, interesting. And you but use you can, that? Yeah, I do. You you can put it into your ground your ground layer because what you what you don't want to do is spend a ton of money on your ground layer, and your ground layer is so important. That's why when when I sent you all those pictures of Velasquez, all these close-ups, you're going to see how some painters will use the ground layer 
and and to in the final painting which is really cool well, it's very let's economical, get into it but yeah that's that's a yeah. good segue to let's let's get into the paintings themselves okay so yeah so let's uh let me let me see uh the first one i think let's 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 go very classic um we could go to i think the first one i sent you was leo our big Oh no! I sent you Jan Van Eyck. So, so put him up. That's the, the the bride and the yeah. There you go. Yep. So um, Jan Van Eyck mm. is called the Jewish Bride. I think is mm. the formal title of it. And so if I, I'm uh, very pale, very pale, skin very tone. pale, very pale skin tones. But if you um, if you get a good look up a good high res image of it anyone can look it up it's jan van eyck j-a-n and then v-a-n and then e-i-c-k you can look at this and wikipedia does a, a phenomenal job this is where they shine well they do well with art they get these high res images and you can blow them up and you can zoom in so so deep and see some of what's going on but he is pale and pasty and so is she but when you look at the shadows especially of the eye sockets and uh, it's phenomenal what, what he's able to do in 13, I want to say 30, something like that. I mean, it's, this is, this is way mm. early, early Renaissance. This is before Leonardo da Vinci has got, you know, his thing going on. So why don't we go there next? And that that's going to be, um, well, let me just, take, let me just take a look here. Yeah. Um, I just want to look at a, at a closer. Yep. Uh, Let's see. So this is this it right here? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And uh, so, that's yeah, it. this helps me see it in more of a. That's a more clear image. Yeah. Wait, where'd it go? Shoot. Yeah, that was a good one. Uh, okay, here we go. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, can you give me some insight? So, yeah, it, she's paler than him. And there. Yeah. In the uh, in the high def, I can definitely see much more, mm -hmm. uh, much more skin tone. It's a reddish, mm -hmm. reddish pinkish skin yep. tone. Not much, not much green. Nope, not much green. No, not much green. Even in the shadows, it's a little bit more towards the warm and the kind of the black or or the or, uh, warm kind of a mm. grayish. Yeah, and not much shadows. Right. Uh, right. In the background, in particular, what strikes me is this very lit up background, which is kind Except, of weird, right? For but optically, what? if you look in the upper left quadrant, look at the look at how dark that that one little corner is. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so that's how. And then and then putting the chandelier in front of that, which is in between. So you have the back wall, then the chandelier, then them, yeah. and then in front of them is a puppy on the ground. So you have four layers here going on, and actually we're the fifth layer as oh, a viewer. Wow. We're we're like, so it's the depth that he gets. But mm. where's your eye, where does your eye go when you see this? Oh, it goes to the guy's face, yeah, face, and then down to his hand, then to his hand holding hers, and then you see her. Yeah. I mean, that's so there. So literally, as far as real estate here, there's very little flesh. That's my point. Yeah. But you are drawn to it, and he painted it, knowing what he was doing. Look as a at master. This, in the mirror in the background. Mm -hmm. I yep. never noticed. And if you wow. zoom in on that, it reflects them. And oh, shoot. Um, shoot. I want to say, go. yes, it reflects them extremely well. And then, yeah, you can also read the writing uh, on on the wall above it. Yeah, what does it say? Is, I want to say. Janamar I that might, Iker, food that might J. Yeah, I have no idea. It might be a signature. Uh, who knows? But uh um, yeah, it might be his it, full name. He's he's one I haven't done deep study on. But I've studied this picture in a, enough. I think I, I want to say that there's something else in the in the mirror too. I don't know if he put a self-portrait in there. You see their backs. But oh, obviously he's the maybe one if you zoom but, in more, I can't zoom in yeah, anymore. Yeah, I. But maybe I the uh, wait, wait, maybe I can. Maybe I can. Let's see here. I can't quite get there with this image on uh, on Wikipedia, but it's oh, it, it, that 
that messed everything up. But he might be. <laughs> he may be there. I don't know. I that you know that's Van Eyck is one that's on my like he's on my list. He's probably on my short list. Yeah. But, I, um, I I want to look into this picture more, but yeah. but uh, we we need to come back to skin tone and yeah yeah this is interesting like I ex- is this is a Renaissance painter and I expected to see more shadow and more mm-hmm. green I'm, yeah. I'm I'm sort of interested to see so much pink in and, the orange yes. and yeah. Exactly. Compared yeah. to all, everything else, and this this comes back to uh, uh, the one guy, actually the guy that makes a lot of the paints that I buy, Robert Doak. The guy's 82 years old. So knowledgeable. has helped me so much. Mm. <laughs> I brought a painting that I was working on to him. And I was like, because he paints too, and he's studied, he, 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 he's uh, provided paints, he provides paints to a lot of big time painters today um he, he he he's provided paints to david hockney that's probably the biggest name painter uh who's uh, not painting anymore i don't even know if he's still alive but a lot of big name painters today uh john curran is one of them and he, he he's 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 just people are drawn to his, his product because it's really good he's really good with pigments picking okay. them Pig- grinding yes. them to the right Pigment. consistency so, so for the uninitiated, pigments. What is mm-hmm. a pigment? What is a pigment? It, it, it's it's a material. It could be an earth material or a synthetic material, and it's ground up into a powder and then put into oil. And that's that's why oil paint is is, is what it is. It's 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 a like a linseed oil or a walnut oil, and you put a pigment in it, as opposed to watercolor, where you're going to put it into a, a, a you know put basically put it in water and then paint it on or acrylic where so, you put but, some kind of other binder so a pigment that could be like ground up um that could be like ground up uh i lead? don't know turmeric for <laughs> yeah. lead lead yeah. Lead white lead. which is a oxidation on lead yeah so lead carbonate Here's here's what I did. You know, um, uh, Sean Connery's book in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, you know, the one that, that shows you the Holy Grail. Well, I, I made my own book uh, about 22 oh. years ago. Well, I had this thing, and I, I got all these technical books on painting out of the library, and I started just reading about – just about pigments. I mean – sections of these technical books about pigments and i started writing down what they do you know so i have a column for the name of the pigment the historical name of the pigment it's opacity or transparency so um let me get a okay um burnt sienna that's one you would use a lot burnt sienna is an earth color you're going to use that for it's a brown red right it's a reddish brown it's a reddish brown Okay. Uh, I have a column here for its opacity, opaque quality, or transparency. So is it more opaque, more transparent? It's quite opaque and rather dull when used straight from the tube. But when thinned with a medium, takes a, fair, a, a fiery tone, red, useful mm-hmm. for glazing. So people would use this to glaze into like flesh tones, or you could use it for like tree bark or, um, you know, uh, some kind of brown that you need somewhere else in 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 nature. Explain. Wait. wait time out. Explain glazing. Gla- okay. Glazing is what we just saw with Ben I. That's where he took medium, a medium like an oil, and he put in his flesh tones. He would have a white underneath, and that would be your well. After Jan van Eyck, I haven't studied him enough to know what he used, but after Jan van Eyck, okay. and not far after him, you're yeah, talking you pretty much. Uh, yeah, we can go to we can go to Mona Lisa. Why not? Why not? Um, that's Botticelli. Let's hang on to Botticelli. We'll come oh, back to oh, Botticelli. Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Yep. There we go. Uh, and and so Leonardo da Vinci, there is yeah. now really mastering the idea of glazing and now you're using 
you're using oils or solvents like turpentines, you know, those types of the mineral spirits basically yeah. to thin out the paint. And if you mix those with oil, you can, there's so many combinations of glazing mediums. I mean, it's pretty much anything that can hold a, an, an oil paint can be a glazing medium. If it, if it, if it, if it can thin it out without, um, you, you, you can't thin it out so much that the pigment falls apart. You know, it has to stay together. So you have to figure out what consistency works. But balsam oils, spike oil of lavender, linseed oil, stand oil, which is like a sun or in sun thickened oil. So that's a real thick oil. Linseed oil. Uh, I like walnut oil, cold pressed walnut oil. It has you a like lot wa of walnut oil the best. I do. Yeah, I I, mm -hmm. I, I do, and it's. Uh, um, Mainly because of the pa painters that I like the most, used it the most. So I just kind of like, eh, it worked for them. Why shouldn't it work for me? And it has, so. <laughs> okay. Um, but, yeah, so, me, you know. Uh, I, I, yeah. It, unfortunately, it's not giving a very mm -hmm. uh, detailed. I'm trying to get a little bit better here. Um, it, yeah. If we, if we could get a close-up of her face, that that's what I should have looked up, actually. Okay. Well, something like that a little bit more? So, yeah, that's good. So it's a little blurry still. It, 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 I think I, the good thing here is I think people have seen it enough. But the, a couple things I want to point out, um, you know, well back back to the book. I, I listed tinting strength, you know, the drying time that matters for oil painters. Like how if, if mm. it, certain certain pigments take some take longer to dry and some dry very fast, and you want the fast okay. drying ones. And uh, so our burnt sienna, uh, it's it's a fast dryer and so you can actually use it if you have a color that's kind of close you can mix a little bit a little bit of it into that color and it'll help it dry faster okay. you know if it doesn't change the color too much so then you have um the pigment is it a natural or a synthetic and then other stuff about it so i put all this information about this so i have it at my fingertips they're all i made it alphabetical i don't know how i did that i, I was miss her mom at the time and that's how i did it I had we had oh, one son. We had Dante, and I had I was I was I had two part time jobs while Karen worked at a at a mental health care facility full time, and I was studying. I was like, okay, well, I'm going to take advantage of the time and study and learn. I learned all this stuff about pigments at the time, and my next door neighbor happened to be an art teacher that was also into the same stuff. So I, I was get, kind of getting schooled in one way. Um, yeah. But what I learned is is that um, how uh, glazing. I learned a lot about glazing from that study and from my next door neighbor. Um, <laughs> so is and, there glazing done here? I noticed that yeah. there is mm -hmm. very little white. There's zero white. Yeah, her eyes are not even white. Yeah, this and this painting. Unfortunately, I I haven't found. Uh, well, I, let me see. I, I have a recent book that I bought. I got it at uh, Barnes and Nobles. It was on sale of Leonardo da Vinci's work. And it's very, it's got incredible images, much better than this on, on uh, and I don't know if this is before, if it's just bad photography or if it's, and I gave you this image. So I'm pointing uh, to no, make No, no, this or, is actually one I got off of. Uh, this is the one on Wikipedia. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know if that, this is one of those rare instances where they're, I know that there are better images that exist out there than than. How about this. Some, like is this better? This one. Uh, let's see. I uh, can't see it. Um. So so we're looking for more colorful. Uh. Well, not necessarily, but there's a there's a there's enough there we can talk about. I just think it's a little green there. Something and, like this. Um, yeah, that looks better. That's looks a little yeah. bit better. I think. That's something's not uh, right about this one. See. Yeah, this one looks. Little... This one looks like it's a, it's a copy. Fake, right? Some kind of. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not. That's not her. Mm. That's not the painting. But uh, you can go back to the to the green one, okay. the alien looking one. That's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but why? Why does it look alien like that? It's. It needed to be cleaned. This is either a bad. Yeah. Uh, it's not a bad photograph. It's a, it, it, because I can see the the crack the crackler you can kind of see is very detailed. So it looks like it was just before it had been restored. 
clean point restore yeah cleaned up ah, okay and and you saw the you probably saw the little documentary i posted on the national gallery uh, yeah boy was, it, was that nine minutes like whew, I learned so much <laughs> that is a really good video though. Yeah. yeah it bothered me it, though that it I, should i struggle it should. i struggle me too it's taken me years to go through that. So t t tell me your struggle. Let's make sure we're having the same struggle here. Because I, 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 I hear just, you. Like, to me, I, I don't know what the real struggle is, but there's something that doesn't feel right about going in and um, mm. restoring pictures uh, yeah. in the sense that how is it different than repainting it? You know, yeah. in some ways, in yeah. some ways, I know when you go in and you put the yeah. chemicals, are you not introducing a yes. new element? Oh, absolutely. You are, you, you are. And that's what restoration is as, as a, as an industry. It's, it, it is an industry. Uh, and it has, has, I mean, unless, unless at major cities where there's major amounts of art, bombs go off and destroy these these paintings, there's, there's a lifetime of work for plenty of restorers and yeah. they're needed. And, and it's, it's a struggle. It is a struggle because when you, and for everyone who's not sure what we're talking about, you go to my um, Facebook page and you scroll down a few days ago, I posted a video from the national gallery in London and some of their cutting edge work that they're doing in restoration. And they restored this Artemisia Gentileschi painting, which is a beautiful painting of her posing as a self-portrait but posing as Kath, uh, saint catherine of the wheel and it's a phenomenal painting in and of itself and they fix it there's paint loss and paint into it and he describes the the process uh, larry keith who's a phenomenal mind for this kind of thing I've, I've watched lots of videos and read lots of his work and um it's it's you're yeah. walking on hallowed ground when you're when you're touching something like this, uh, yeah. or, or one of these paintings. And uh, what I'll, they do, I actually I will put it in the um, I'll put it in the in the comments. comments. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's that's a good way to do it. It it, it that is nine. It's a nine minute video. It tells you so much about what goes on to to fix yeah. and up and upkeep pictures like this. Now that one had damage on it, not not the same kind of damage that this. Uh, has incurred over the years usually varnishes are it's kind of like take the varnish off put a new one on take the varnish off put a new one on that one had paint loss on her on her forearm and they had to actually paint that back in and 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 there was yeah some cracking on the bottom as well that they painted into and but he you know like he said and he's absolutely right they paint they clean it back to layer they know where they know where that varnish is ending and where the paint's beginning. I don't know how they figure that out. That's phenomenal to me. Well, that they see, know that. that's my other question, though. You know, my difficulty with it is like mm. they say they know. Mm -hmm. uh, and what if later they they realize, oh, we went too far? You no, know? <laughs> yeah, we yeah. went a little too far with that one. Yeah, Do, would they even care? And see, that's the thing is that it's like. Mm -hmm. It's not like it's like once you do it, it's irreversible, right? Like once you get into it too, once you start restoring these things, as far back as they no go, going, there's no yeah. going back, right? It's as, as, as far as they go in removal, whatever that is. Is it are they just removing what was done on top of the artist's work, or they go do they go yeah. too far? From that point, I'm gonna take their word for it that. That I'm, gonna, I'm definitely gonna take their word that what they put on there, they're gonna paint over that, and that's reversible. I'm gonna take their word for that. Yeah. I just don't know that I don't know the science behind how they know that the varnish is now done and the brush strokes have have begun, and now we're, we yeah. need to stop. I don't understand the science of that, which I don't have the time to. See, it's it's much phenomenal. less of a science and much more of an art. Yeah, I. I <laughs> I, I think you're right. <laughs> that's and, my uh, concern. I mean, just at that point, I, that's where I kind of like to look the other way and <laughs> just hope that it's it, it it at least looks like it compares with the artist's other works that have held up well or have been cleaned over the years. But you know, 
the, the one of the one of the things I was trying to suggest there is, yeah, we're talking about skin tone. Who knows what you're looking at? Are we looking at what Leonardo looked at? I don't think he saw, had a green alien uh, Mona Lisa. <laughs> I think she looked much more fleshly. And um, and and so anyway, that's that's just something to point out here. Another thing to point out here is a technique because it's not just the color of the flesh we're talking about, but a technique of of values. But you can mm. see like the shading, the shading is beautiful here, right? Yeah. But you know, the shading recedes into her hairline looks normal. Like your 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 shadows, yeah, with the, with the hair, like it would kind of just fuzz away, right? And then just kind of mm. gradually happen. But look at on the on the other side. Let me see if I can. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's perfect. Her yeah. Neck there. The hard okay, line, yeah. the hard line on the other side is what I want to point out. Okay, let's this see is a technique. Yeah. On the other side? Yeah, not the hair side. Well, not the 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 hair with the ear side, where it's. Uh, but yeah, yeah that right side. Here. Yep. If you go up on her cheek somewhere. Yeah, right in there. You see how that's gradual? How, where where does where does her mm. face end and the hair begin? You can't find yeah. out. Yeah. That's called it's sfumato. That's called sfumato. S F M U T O. It's a it's, there's a lot of Italian words we need to learn. Um, about nine or so of them that are techniques that that developed during the Renaissance. Because you can see specks of this red in mm -hmm. her cheek. Yes, and that's where you fuse the edges. You fuzz them to make but to make the transition more gradual. But when you back up, it actually pops more. Had he made a hard line there, it would look more like an illustration and less like a painting, is what I'm getting mm. at. As it stands there, yeah. she's even even with the flesh tones not where we want them. That's why this is a great example. It still looks very contoured, real. Yeah. The level yeah. of realism is phenomenal. And yes, you see some of those red specks. And 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 that glazing is 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 he's he's, he's using a less wet. He's he's dry, probably drying his brush a little bit, and then he's dragging it back and forth with a little bit of wet paint on both sides, and he's fusing it. That's the mm. spumato kind of fusing or fuzzed. Okay, edges. But here's something. Here's something. I think I like it more green <laughs> than I do. You know, there's something about the contrast of the red. You know, those two mm -hmm. complementary colors. Well, they are they, the comp. They they are the complementary, the most complementary colors, green and red. And so there's something cool about and... that 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 um, you know, starburst of red mm -hmm. into the green. Now, if it mm -hmm. had been white or pink, yeah. it wouldn't be. I wouldn't be able to see it as much, right? And so that, that makes sense there's something interesting about her having green. And that's one of the things I wanted to talk about when it comes to skin color, mm -hmm. how much of the drama can, and, and, and I know some of this is because of the fading and wasn't originally intended to be that maybe. Um, however, this is what we have and this is yeah. what we love. Right? right. So how much of it is the drama of the imagination Mm -hmm. As opposed to to the realism, you know, the, how much does realism infringe on mm -hmm. our imagination and infringe on drama? That's now now you're getting into the the conversation of realism versus photorealism, and that's to me mm. once you cross there there's actually a third element i think in between would be illustration like i said if that that to art to the viewer um left cheekbone her right cheekbone if that had been a hard line mm -hmm. i don't think it would look as realistic as it does and we still know it's a painting no. i'm not and when i say realism saying realism within painting we still look at it and we say that's a painting but it's a painting with realism and it mm -hmm. like the, even the eye socket there i mean the, it's gorgeous it just pops right the eyelid is just it, yeah. pops the, the eye looks like an eye it looks like there's like it's like it's wet like there's a fluid mm -hmm. that natural fluid that glosses over the eye it looks like it's there mm -hmm. 
and and it feels like it's there and it feels like that's one type of substance an eye substance and the skin looks feels like it's a a, 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 a tangible flexible skin substance and and it yeah so those that but that's realism yeah and i think illustration is more liney and um and it has a lot more hard hard edge lines less of that fused edge or the sfumato that they call it mm. uh, where it the transition is very delicate there is an end it's mo it's different than the other side where it's more gradual but it's yeah it's not a hard line and that that is this was a this this was a um it was a revelation i mean like this kind of painting was 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 new it was yeah it, it wasn't something that they had done much before jan van eyck had had accomplished some of this to some to some degree and okay. and and leonardo da vinci was a student of a much lesser painter and just totally blew past the that guy Visaccio. Flew, flew past him quickly and outpaced him, became master. Of wow. Like, had he devoted his entire life to painting because he was an architect and engineer. He, he had so many, he was the classic, why they get, we get the term Renaissance man. Renaissance had he devoted man, yeah. his life only to painting, who knows what we would have had? Who knows? Mm. Mm. All right. Well, let's move on to the next one. All right. Let's go to, let's see, what did I have next? Uh, I had, oh, I had another Leo one. Uh, real quick, the two, the, the angel and Mary. That's the Annunciation. A very clean painting. Now, yeah, exactly. This, I just wanted to show you because, again, you have, there's, in terms of real estate, most of it is background mm. and some foreground, but you're immediately drawn to these two beings and one of them yeah is a human being mary and so we know mm -hmm. that she has flesh like, like we have flesh but we're invited mm -hmm. into this angelic form with wings and who has also it appears to be flesh like we have flesh but we know that not to be the case but mm. what do we see we see two people <laughs> isn't that amazing uh yeah Although there's and, and, more shadowing on Mary. Yes. You mean, yes, yes, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Like, there's and, a little bit more, um, uh, you know, it's like, uh, there, there's more texture to Mary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, look at that arm of the angel. It's almost glowing. Yes. Yes. As opposed to yeah. her arm. She is there's she's retracting the one. from the glow from the yeah. glow from the angel. She's almost retracting the one and holding the other where it was. Mm -hmm. But you know what 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 I wanted to say about this, and if you if if you go and look up the Annunci Annunciation by Leonardo da Vinci and look at the high res images, yeah. you can zoom in and okay the painting is so clean this is it's a very well preserved and a very clean painting it's clean in the sense that it's very well uh ordered by the artist uh there's so Ooh. many different planes going on and it's it's just easy to see what's going on but you're you're drawn immediately to these two figures and one of them isn't even a human being so you know oh, yeah. storytelling. Gotta, okay okay let's 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 go to this just a minute um you got a good one am i looking at it now is that it yep that's it yeah. that's it that's the one okay so let's let's go deeper Oof. Mm-hmm. what is this gotta deal with this thing all right do you have the badge to get in <laughs> it's asking all right so all right where do you want to go with this well, I, I like the angel's face in particular. Mm. When you get it in up on the angel's face, it just, it just, um, mm. you have that sfumato going on again too. But you see how dark it is; it almost looks illustrative. Yeah. But when you get so when wet. you get, yep, exactly. That was not an accident. Of course, we know that. Mm. But when you when you when you get close and and you can look at it, you 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 do see that same thing. There's a, there is a smooth 
a fused transition where it's not like harsh. Otherwise, it again, would look it's even a more green. Yeah. Again, it is. Yeah. 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 Well, the, um, well, you. I'd rather look a little green. Uh, this is where I was going to go earlier. Than to be accused of being bubblegum because uh, that when I took my painting to Robert Doak, who I get paints from. He, he, I brought a painting and it had four figure, five figures in it. And he's like, mm. it, and it's people in a boat and they're they're being tossed about. And he's like, it looks like bubblegum flying it, sticks of bubblegum flying everywhere. <laughs> like, all right, I need Bubble to go back to work. Yeah. So <laughs> he, when you said pinkish, yeah. I, I would almost yeah. rather air on the side of greenish than than. Yeah, there is because... something more human about green, yeah. which is weird, right? Because we think more alien. Right. We have, but people yeah. don't realize how much green is really in us. I didn't realize Veins. it until I had to start doing uh, green screen, mm. and you see, like sometimes the green will sort of come out in the, in the face, you know. Oh, nice! Huh. Interesting. That's that makes um, sense. <laughs> where where you so, know you don't want it you want yeah. So this so painting yeah, what it, it's definitely one worth looking at and just because it's academically done really well I mean he's he was kind of setting he was schooling everyone on how to paint but um, it's a beautiful picture. It's well well preserved. It's one that you can you can look at, and you can see one. You can find high res images of it pretty pretty easily. Let's go to Botticelli mm. now, okay. and that's going to be the Venus. We just put up before that. There we go. There's a lot of flesh compared to the ones we've just looked at, right? Yeah. And this one, yes. Obviously, the central figure coming out of the oyster. So you have this whole fertility thing going on, and it is Venus. Right, so we have a mythology picture here now. We're not now we're not dealing with a religious subject. I wanted to also throw that in, so we have a mythological mm. picture going on. And we we've looked at pictures with what green flesh. We don't see any green flesh here, right? And it's also not bubble gummy, but we do have green in the background, and we have blue. We have blue in the sky. We have green in the sea. Here, it let's, makes. Uh, I got I've got the, uh, I've got real quick. Let me get the yeah. uh, Mona Lisa. I uh, know. I mean, sorry. Venus. You go side by side. Oh, yeah. There we go. So let's, let's see at this real quick. So this is a little bit more detailed. Whoa. We mm -hmm. need to go back. Okay. So. All right. Let's talk about it. Yeah. So Botticelli was an incredible draftsman. And draftsman means someone who can draw, right? And mm -hmm. basically all of the Renaissance painters, other than maybe El Greco, we don't know, I don't know a whole lot about him as a as 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 an artist in terms of his drawing ability. They can all draw like crazy. Some of them painted mm -hmm. more like paintings and they drew when they drew they were drawing when they painted their paintings. For me, Botticelli looks a little more illustrative. I don't know mm, if you feel yeah, that. Yeah, this definitely looks, yeah. Um, now, he is, it is, is a it? painting. It is a painting. Part of it is, you see how, like, on her left side, um, it doesn't get, it feels like it should almost get a little darker before it yeah. goes to the sky. And he's, he's, yeah. He's trying. He he's not doing using the sfumato. He's not using that. Uh, he's not putting a dark line there that would make it really mm. illustrative. But he's just making he's making the subject end and he's making the sky begin, almost mm. like a fresco. And 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 in frescoes, which means fresh, it means fresco means fresh, and that's because they had to make a fresh um, mixture of pigment and lime to go mm -hmm. into the plaster, into the mm -hmm. pigment to go into the lime plaster. And that was a day's work uh, mm. to do that much. Whatever portion that they're working on, they did that section. Uh, and, 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 and they had to paint fast when they did the frescoes because they're not oil paints. And it goes into the 
to the to the to the surface uh, of the of the wall. Ah, Basically, the wall is being painted into. Yeah. As opposed to like, a, as, as opposed to a panel or a canvas. So frescoes, they would tend to paint like. But see, paint. but see, he did do some outlines. Look at the guy's nose there. Yeah. Yep. Both of them. Isn't that he kind of illustrative? Clear, yes. It? And it his feels chin, less. It is a painting, but yeah. it does look more illustrative. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you um, know what it makes me think of. You mentioned it before. Uh, of course, it. Uh, who's that American painter who did all the like classic American paintings? Um, you know, nineteen thirties paintings. Oh yeah, Norman Rockwell. No, it, it, yeah. it, it's a lot more Norman Rockwell than yeah. it is. Yeah, because that's a good correlation. He painted, but he also he who's more of an he was an illustrator at heart that painted, basically. Ah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, you know, but this like, is this temperate. Guy's face is very Ro Norman yeah. Rockwell esque, right? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, you. Yeah, you can see someone instead of blowing that. Out of his mouth, you know, you could see someone he had a chewing whistle or something. So yeah, a whistle or chewing bubble gum. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That's a good. I wouldn't have yeah. thought that, but and you bring it up. It's like, yeah, yeah. It's it's much more illustrative. You look at yeah. You look you look at Botticelli's work. It's very precise and it has its own way of getting at accuracy and realism. But it's it's not the same as what we saw with Leonardo. Not at all. Mm. And this is tempera. It's not fresco, but you had to paint fast for so it's a little too. less 3D, right? It's a lot flat. Little less, yes. Tempera. Yes. Yes. But you know, this is and he painted tempera on canvas. So you can do it. It's it's much less less likely to work out. And this painting has actually held up really well. So I I really don't I know. Mean, look at that face. Exactly. That is beautiful. Isn't the it? The rouge yeah. in her cheeks. Yeah. Her lips. But notice how that is gorgeous. Notice how the eyes don't quite. I mean, one. If you look at where they yeah. where they meet up, it's a little bit, yeah, and purposefully off. Yeah. They both kind of are a little bit level instead of. They should be kind of. There's a little something bit angled. unrealistic too about yep. the pink, the pink, uh, but it's thing under her eye. You know, but it's a little more engaging from that, too. Which is yeah, really. What's interesting is she's. And she's not looking at us. No, she's looking at like over our left shoulder. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> she just blew by us. <laughs> she's like, That's "Oh, you thought I was, you thought I was coming for you." Oh, <laughs> not you. Sorry, other person behind you. Um, what's the deal with the spitting here? Do we know? Uh, I, you know, I don't know. I haven't studied this painting to that level. To be honest with you, I no, I, I don't know yeah, what it is. That's fine. But, but but there's also an aspect of it that like I feel like there needs to be darker shot like yeah between yeah. there's they're yeah. almost one person right like the shadowing there's yeah. no distinctness and maybe that's on purpose they're one person you know there's no it, distinctive between the to her whoever this girl is and like his her her dude there yes and what I wanted to although to, their their skin tone is different what I'm sorry. Oh no! What I wanted to go through here is uh, the central figure is 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 what a goddess, right? Mm -hmm. And so again, what I was what I was trying to 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 mention here, we, we're dealing with skin tone, and this is one of the great skin tone, flesh tone pictures of the Renaissance. Because aside aside from the illustrative qualities, mm -hmm. the skin tones are beautiful beautifully contoured, modeled, and she's not human. As I mentioned in the last picture, the religious picture, mm. the angel was not human, right? Mm. So you have them, they're, they're manipulating non-human figures to make them more uh, appeal to us more on a human level. Interesting. And, and, and that's a very interesting device in and of itself. Yeah, because her, her figure and and the and the the form and the color are they're they're really like you said beautiful, well rendered. 
Her neck's a little long too. I notice her. You notice her. Yeah. Her neck's a little long, and the eyes don't quite meet up. They're a little. They're both almost like one above the other, like a, like a, one's on the ranch level, and the other is like a loft. <laughs> Instead of them being pointed towards each other, where they they meet up, <laughs> but it works. It works. It totally works. Yeah. Wow. Okay, we have time for one more. All right, one more. All right, well, this – so let me see where we're at here. We are – Oh, we need oh, yeah. to look at the last one, right? Titian, yeah. Uh, we, yeah, Titian will be the next one, and this is – This one? Well, yeah, you know what? Let's just – let's – Let's forget about tissue because we're not going to learn oh. another mytho mythological piece. I mean, you, you could throw it up there real quick. It, oh, just, is it, it this one? Yeah. Um, again, you have a lot of mythological figures. This is uh, Bacchus yeah. and Arion. And um, heavy use of blue here. And blue, This uh, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure a lot of this would have been in Lapis Lazuli, which is mm -hmm. um, still available today. It's extremely expensive. Extremely expensive. Oh, wait. Uh, wait, let's see. Lapis Lazuli. Lapis Lazuli is expensive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. This is... What is it made? What is the pigment? The pigment is um, number 702. Yeah. Um, it's P29, which is aluminum silica sulfur, which is, is found oh, silver. Uh, in Afghanistan. It's a very rare substance ah. and um it's ground into linseed oil uh by michael harding paints and they they make excellent paints um but i don't use blue much so <laughs> i use a very really palette but if i need it for something important like what i'm working on now here's my go-to nice Okay, so yeah, that's uh, this has a lot of lapis lazuli. Yeah, especially the robe and the the yeah. the other female character there, her her cape or whatever there. Yeah, yeah, I but love blue, of, so I use a lot of blue. Yeah. Well, and there's the good thing. The good news is there's modern day um, equivalents that that are pretty potent and powerful. You don't have to buy lapis lazuli. You can get get modern equivalents so they're i would say equivalents but they're pretty close but, um okay. yeah let's go to vlad in, in there because this now we're getting into the 1600s we're really actually past the renaissance and we're getting close mm -hmm. to we're getting into the era where it's 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 a lot of painters that have seen a lot of renaissance paintings and yeah. they're they they're gonna go a lot browner a lot darker uh, a lot less colors and so we're getting to what's called a restricted palette which is exactly what i use um the restricted palette was rembrandt used it certainly after his early phase you're dealing with i mean in, in this picture the um this is vulcan's forge so the the, mm. the god vulcan there um you have some exotic pigments who, who, going who's on the there. artist again velasquez Velasquez. Yeah, Velasquez. V E L A Z Q U E Z. Velasquez. Just a phenomenal okay. painter. I have about like for what I'm painting right now for this the, the, this church series, I'm studying really two painters, Caravaggio and Velasquez because they both got it done quick and efficiently. And so next time in here I think what we should do is con keep continuing this series, go in part two. Yeah. We should pick up back here. But look at all the, I mean, <laughs> look at all the manly flesh going on there. I mean, this is a, like, there is a yeah, ton we, we of gotta, it. Let, we, we have to, let's go, let's go high def here. Yeah. The sugar screen and go over the last quiz here. Yeah. We got to go, go high def here. Here we go. Wow. I mean, that, yep, that's, it, and um, this is, I, should, I should look this up because uh, this is a big painting. I'm just going to look up how the big it is. The first use of the uh, showing a little 
peen line there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yo, no doubt that was that was definitely risque. No doubt about it. Um, you're absolutely right, and uh, they're show they're trying. He's trying to show. You know. A lot of what's going. This is seven foot four inches by nine foot six inches. So, I mean, compared to mine, this is small. Um, <laughs> I like when I can say that. You know, I can't say that about my. <laughs> uh, no. Um, look at the detail and the toes yeah. and the like the calf. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that's those are like these guys are ripped. Oh, the, actually, if you look at the, the look at the belly on the god there, like. He looks, you know, he probably should lay off, you know, the wine a little bit, or I don't know. They're totally ripped. Though. <laughs> yeah. Well, wasn't there little, a, some love comment, handles going wasn't on? There some, wasn't there some commentary? I mean, back then it was more attractive to be mm. like the god yeah. here, right? Like the angel. Mm. This yeah. uh, this dude, even he, he's got the peen yeah. line, but he's but he's yeah. like back then it was like, oh, you're a worker. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But this guy's back. Stones. The guy is back ah. in the foreground here. I mean, is that an incredible male back or not? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's so just... talk to me about these colors mm -hmm. here. I'm seeing pinks, oranges, yeah. greens. You know, green yep. and orange. The beautiful mixture and contrast of green. And orange. Well, the good thing is we have books like this about Velasquez. And this oh. is called Velasquez, The Technique of Genius. There you go, the words. Oh. Uh, but uh, I tell you, this is a very technical book uh, published by Yale University. It's out of print, but you can get a copy of it. The blow-up images of this, I mean, you you get such huge blow-up detail. It's a it's amazing. Really? I if you wanted to buy one or two books, there's one for Rembrandt and one for Velasquez. If I said, if you said, I want to kind of like kind of read about painting and, and old master paintings, especially, and learn how they did what they did from a just from a reader standpoint, or even even to learn or or to learn as well. I would say this would be one of the one of the two connection. Oh. My, did, did you lose me? Yeah, sorry, you're back. You're back. I think. Oh. I don't know. If we're still on. Are oh, you there? Yeah, are you there? Uh, yeah. Did you did oh okay. did we did we drop Lost out? Lost you there minute? for a minute. Lost you there oh. for a minute, yeah. Oh, okay. So anyway, this well, very technical book. We gotta we gotta wrap things up, but yeah, but, we gotta uh, wrap things what's up. What's the book called? It's called Velasquez The Technique of Genius. And it's by Jonathan Brown and Carmen Garrido. This is an a just a good book to look at, but you can read about how they what he did, the, the pigments he used. Next week we'll pick up here because I want to show you how he and I have learned, like him, to use the ground layer. This is the ground Ooh, layer, this reddish color. I haven't touched yeah. this since we talked last right, let's, time. Let's, but you, I use the uh, again? the ground layer here. You see how yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I'm trying to see where I'm going to – up here I've left some of that ground layer. And up yeah. here in this area. Okay. Yeah. Hey, you can see it. You can see how this color yeah. is coming through. And that's yeah. called um, just using using the ground layer. And you can you can you can paint on top of the ground layer, but then just leave some of that for shadow or like yeah. my lips. I'm gonna end up painting over them a little bit, but I'm gonna leave some of that ground layer because it's less painting. You can actually get paintings mm. done quicker if you use this toned ground layer. And you can do it differently. I have a lighter, this more pink kind of toned ground layer that I have for a canvas that I haven't used because I've punctured a hole in it. So I don't know what to paint on it because there's a big hole in it. But, uh, but it's a nice ground layer. <laughs> you can use this pink 
color. It's a reddish. It's, it's red mixed with white. So but okay, that's so what that Velasquez can, you start does. with the ground layer that is like more of a pink, and then you put lighter yeah, color on top of that. Yeah. Mm. Yes, and that's that's. We'll come back to this painting two weeks from now uh, with, with Velasquez. I'm going to show you where he used that ground layer in his hair, uh, on the guy's face, and on his shoulder. And it's like, wow, he just he's using what was already there. He didn't he didn't have to paint as much because he he just used what was already there. And up in his hair, the guy the guy that's got his mouth opened, yeah. we can totally see it. And 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 uh, it, the close up pictures that I sent you show like you can see the canvas reds in his hair. You're like, what? There's hair. There's like yeah. well painted clumps of hair, and then all of a sudden there's canvas threads. But, you don't see it from this picture. It just looks like it's there. Wow. All right. Well, let's let's revisit because I think so. We'll come back to this. Something. Yeah, and and I want to contrast it to yeah. some of the more next time. I want to contrast it to some of the more uh, impressionists. You know the the impressionistic artists. Yeah. Well, of later of latter year. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, because well, I, is, I, yeah, we, we'll get into a whole other different type of uh, painting, and that's that's that that'll be a very fun conversation, because well, it's, uh, been a, it's been fascinating to me. Like it really, I think what I it, I'm gonna make like you, I'm gonna make a self portrait, and I'm nice. gonna create. I, I like that idea of having a ground layer, and yeah. then uh, painting on top of that. And you don't have to paint everything. You can kind of leave some of the eye socket or whatever and just yeah. let, let some of that stuff stay there. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I hopefully right. by next, well, probably not by the next time we meet, but soon this summer, I, I will have a uh, self portrait ready to, to All get right. the critique on. Sounds good. Hopefully, I'll have some stuff to show you too. Yeah. Well, you already do. You got a lot. You got a lot going on. Our, our a lot of drawing art. right now, but yeah, I'll be painting soon. Oh man, uh, I saw some. Uh, you got some. What do you call it? study in studies? Uh, yes. Where you? Oh, they look so good. Thank you. I was looking. I was actually looking at some Van Goghs that look a lot like your studies, like his early studies. Yeah, he, and I know you hate Van Gogh, so that's interesting. I don't hate him, but yeah, I don't like him. Much. He, he was on a path, and he decided, like, I don't want to study anymore. I just want to, like, paint colors. Paint. <laughs> All right. Like well, good, good, good stuff, as always. Yeah, good stuff. Good talking to you, brother. And, uh, and for everybody else, we'll see you again in two weeks, hopefully, come uh, you know, with without the uh, rapture or some vacation or something, I, I don't think anything's happening in two weeks. But uh, oh, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> let's continue talking about skin color, skin but more tone, than that, flesh tones, skin yeah. tone, flesh tones, but also modeling, painting, and color. Yeah, contour, all those things—they yeah. all relate. Awesome.